that it is not just words that matter, but deeds. And if you, you have only to look at President Obama's deeds and actions when it comes to the priorities of women to know that he understands that we're not just a pretty face. He understands that we are the backbone of this economy. We are the backbone of the American family. And in order to make sure that we can continue to move America forward, we need to make sure that women have the strength and that we have the ability to out-educate and out-innovate and out-compete our competitors across the globe. And that's why he's been fighting so hard for the middle class and working families. And let me just tell you that I want to get a little personal for a moment. Because, you know, we're going to hear a lot of wonderful reasons why women in this country should support Barack Obama. I'm going to tell you why I support him. A few years ago, some of you know that I got some bad news. I was doing a self-exam in the shower, and I found a lump. And I was familiar enough with what I normally felt like so that I knew when something felt different. And I went to my doctor, and I was fortunate. I had health insurance. And I got the news. On one day, I was the picture of health, and the next day, I got the news that I had breast cancer, and I was just 41 years old. And I don't care how strong you are, being told you have a serious illness is got, like getting a boulder dropped on you. And then you're asked to carry that boulder around with you for the rest of your life. And under the old healthcare system, it meant that for the rest of my life, an insurance company could drop me or deny me coverage for that pre-existing condition. And I'd be one job loss away from being uninsured or uninsurable. And because I have the breast cancer gene, it means that my cancer was hereditary. And so for my two young daughters, my daughter Rebecca and my daughter Shelby, making sure that being a woman will never again be treated as a pre-existing condition, that was so incredibly important. What Barack Obama did, what Barack Obama did by fighting for Obamacare because we know Obama cares, yes. we embrace the term because we want a president in the White House who cares. He made sure that that burden, that boulder, was lifted from my shoulders. And I could go through life knowing that, God forbid, I get hit with cancer again, or any other serious illness, that I could make sure that I could get it taken care of, and that I could be around to annoy my children for the rest of their lives. <laughs> We have 63 days. And as a busy working mom, I can tell you, I, I have three full-time jobs now. Being my children's mother, that's job one. And it always will be. Representing my constituents in the United States House of Representatives is my first professional responsibility. Is Florida in the House, by the way? Okay, good to know. And chairing the Democratic National Committee, which President Obama asked me to do, I knew what was at stake. And Steve and I knew that the only answer to President Obama was yes. Because what was at stake for our children, if American voters made the wrong choice on November 6th, could impact them for decades, and really for generations. And so when I think about the next 63 days, I know that I'm going to do what I've done for the last 16 months and work like hell. Work my heart out. Make sure that there is no one that will outwork me. But I can't do that by myself. I can't keep that promise by myself. I need you to help me keep it. And I need you to help me keep it because remember 2008. I want to ask you to think back to election night of 2008. Remember seeing President Obama and his beautiful family in Grant Park on election night? I still get goosebumps when I think about it. That election was truly historic, and we were euphoric on that night. 
But you know what? As we've seen since the Republicans took over the House of Representatives, since Republican governors and legislatures exploded across the country, we've seen what Republican control means for women. We know the progress that we made under Barack Obama and Joe Biden. So 2012 is personal. It's personal, and we're not going back, are we? We're going to make sure over the next 63 days that we part with what is really our most precious resource. Not our money, because that's the Republicans. The Republicans think that money is the most precious resource in any campaign. We know, as busy moms and grandmas and daughters and sisters, that our most precious resource is our time. And so I want you to make sure that you think about how much of each of those next 63 days you can give us. And if you think that you've already worked hard, dig deeper and work harder. Knock on one more door, make one more phone call. Make sure that we wake up on November, on November 7th with no regrets. That we look back on this election and we know we